Hello there and welcome to today's five minute lesson. I'm going to be starting the chemistry series today and when you start with kind of talking about chemistry, pretty simply you want to start with atomic structure. So today's the atomic structure. Um, so essentially an atom is a tiny particle um, that all matter, everything that we can touch and see and look at is made of atoms. And there's a lot of different kinds of atoms, but they're all made of the same three subatomic particles. Remember atom, there's the word atom, right? And so we want to say that subatomic means less, smaller than an atom. So all atoms are made of three subatomic particles. Um, you've probably heard of them. So there's the proton, and then there's the neutron, and then there's the electron. Um, so we tend to refer to protons as having a positive charge and electrons meaning having a negative charge. What does that mean? Basically it means, well, if I have two protons, uh, they both exert a positive charge, and so they're going to repel each other. They're going to apply a force on each other and move away. Um, versus if I have, uh, and same thing if I have two electrons, they're going to repel each other. If I have a proton and an electron, they have opposite charges and opposites attract. So they're going to be attracted towards each other. Um, protons and neutrons are both much, much larger than electrons. So while we kind of might draw them as similar sizes. Actually, um, the proton is like 2,000 times heavier than an electron. So it actually would be talking about something like this. Um, so that's important because that means that when a proton and an electron apply a force on each other, the electron is usually the one who does most of the moving. Imagine if you and someone much taller than you, like Shaquille O'Neal, pushed each other Obviously, you're going to move a lot more. Uh, neutrons add mass, but they don't have any charge of any kind. That's why they're called neutrons. They're neutral. Um, so now the protons and neutrons are in the center of the atom. It's called the nucleus. Now we often draw it here. Let's go ahead and erase a little bit of our. Okay, let's go make a little whiteboard here. All right. So uh, often in uh, you'll see what's called the Bohr model. This is a Bohr model example of an atom. This is kind of old. It's outdated, but it's still fairly accurate um, in that the nucleus is in the very middle and it has all the protons and all the neutrons and it has all essentially all the mass too because they're all way heavier. The electrons are rotating around the outside. This is the Bohr model. Again, this is not actually accurate because uh, electrons don't actually aren't, well they are particles. Okay, this is where things get a little weird. Electrons are particles, but they're so small and they move so fast they don't actually, you can't hold it. You can't hold it in place and bounce it off a wall or anything. Instead, it's like a cloud. So instead of this Bohr model, um, I instead, we want to think of it more as the clouds of electrons in, in what are called orbitals. That's the zones the electrons are allowed to occupy, uh, the sorts of configurations they, they live in and are going around the outside of the atom. Um, but all the mass is in the center. In fact, if I tell you, you have seen football maybe, if you see a football field, the entirety of the field, if that was the size of an atom, you would take a little marble, just one marble, and put that in the very middle, and that would be the nucleus. It's, a, it's really tiny and super heavy and super dense compared to all of this space the electrons are occupying. Um, so the electrons are applying negative charge, and they're kind of going around the atom, and so, but the protons are all in the middle, and they're exerting the positive charge. Um, how you identify what an atom is, is essentially how many protons it has. What, that's what matters for what, uh, for example, if I have an atom, is it an atom of gold? Is it an atom of hydrogen or carbon or helium or whatever? Uh, you count the number of protons, and that's what's called the atomic number. The atomic number is how many protons there are, and that also gives you the identity of the atom. Uh, neutrons add mass, and so you can have something with two protons and two neutrons, and that's two protons, so therefore it's helium. But if it has two neutrons, the whole thing weighs four atomic mass units, AMUs. But if it has one neutron and two protons, well, it's still helium, because there's two protons, but there's only one neutron, so the whole thing only weighs three AMUs instead of four. Um, so basically, when you're looking at the protons, neutrons, and electrons, um, the protons determine the atomic number and the positive charge. The electrons are canceling out the charge of the protons. And so if you have the same number of protons as electrons, they're neutral, it's the neutral atom. 
If you have fewer electrons, it's a positively charged atom. If you have more electrons, it's a negatively charged atom. And the neutrons add mass. And so, when, remember what I mentioned, if you have two different uh, atoms of helium and they have different numbers of neutrons, the word for that is isotopes. There are different isotopes. This is one isotope, is weighs three, and this other isotope weighs four, of helium, right? They're both helium, but one's heavier. Uh, so that's what isotopes are. And for that matter, that wraps up the basic chemistry. Um, um, uh, the next one after this is electron configuration because essentially chemistry is the study of the behavior of the electrons. So we're going to see that one next.